Greetings and welcome to this all new episode of Let's Create Something with Treco Tao. It's been a while, um, basically before the summer, uh, bef uh, at the beginning of the summer, I said to myself, it's, if it's uh, on the rainy and gray, uh, cloudy days, I'm gonna record as many tutorials as I can and the rest of the time I will spend it outside uh, doing uh, several kind of activities and having fun. Uh, and my god, when I look back at it, almost all the summer was uh, sunny and uh, each time it rained it was uh, during night time so uh, I did spend pretty much uh, all of it outside uh, doing riding my bike and uh, capturing uh, nice locations with my uh, 360 uh, Teta photo and now I'm back and I'm ready to record uh, plenty more and uh, I've missed you guys uh, I've, I, I've got to do this uh, start once again and before I start uh, making new ones I'm gonna address this, a couple of uh, um, previous ones um, previous examples uh, for example this one was a scene uh, from a tutorial I posted a couple of months ago about how to uh, uh, create a nice uh, depth of field uh, but uh, people ask how did I put this together and uh, well in this one we're gonna um, casually try to recreate this it's been a while so it's probably gonna uh, make it s to some level uh, of difference but what the heck let's start a new one and let's see how we can how we're gonna put something like this together with charcoal tau so let's start a new project and uh, let's call this uh, block factory and um, let's make this one a 16 by 9 so let's make the standard HD and uh, let's make the duration at least uh, 900 frames and we're gonna start this by creating a new solid and let's call this one Tau and let's apply our Tau effect on there oh yeah it's been a while baby but I'm back and uh, let's um, start off by creating a, a light object so control shift alt L and uh, let's make it a spotlight and let's call this Tau and um, make sure that the radius is uh, default 100 and fall off distance uh, the same and let's click OK and uh, let's create a new null control shift alt Y on which we're gonna hit F4 to reveal that and make it 3D copy the position onto our light so I'm hitting control C here on the position property and I'm just picking up the light and pasting it and uh, for good measures as we always do we're gonna get uh, right click to get in the transform uh, in this contextual menu auto orient and we're gonna set that to off all right so let's start by making a straight line out of this so uh, let's remove our automatically generated path and uh, let's also uh, double tap quickly on a and uh, let's start with a white, totally white light. All right, um, and let's make a simple straight line of objects, of end gons. So um, this here is at the center, and this here, let's connect it to that. So its position is gonna become zero and zero and zero. And um, let's move it laterally, so horizontally, let's uh, move it 380 pixels on the left and then let's get to frame 300 and we can uh, this is a habit here to just to remember where the uh, end of geometry uh, construct so by default tau uses 10 seconds when you don't have any keyframes on your lights so it's just uh, a way to uh, keep track of that and uh, right here on the second keyframe we can make it positive 380 so it's going to be um, an equivalent distance from the center not that it's uh, totally uh, not that we uh, totally need that but 
it's a good way to go. Let's uh, save that. So I'm going to call it uh, block factory three. And this was one I made uh, on February. So it's been a while. Uh, let's make it, let's get in the segments and let's make it uh, repeat and gone. So now we're not going to notice uh, any because we've got a couple of them in there. So let's see. Let's make it four only and then we can adjust how we want them to be so let's make it like let's make them standing up so right now they're uh, on the side and let's make them six sides so they're gonna be uh, hexagonal shapes like in my example but you can put anything that you want here and if we rotate that uh, we'll make it uh, we'll make in sort that they, they look up and uh, so rotate the y value to 90 degrees or also we'll see later on if we need to um, in this case I don't think we would want them to be oriented to the path so we can just leave it like that and if you if we want to leave all those um, at zero we can change it on the light here so let's make it 90 on the X and they'll be all standing up so several ways to do it and not there that there's one good one and the others are bad are wrong but uh, all of them are valid ways to do it um let's um let's perhaps reduce the size of that to i don't know no let's keep it like that but let's make it uh let's double that so now we've moved it 380 pixels on the left so it's minus 380 let's set uh, double that distance so we're going to simply hit the star key on the numpad here and multiply that by 2 and um, w it, it gives us uh, a 760 we're going to put the same here so we can also multiply that by 2 and that'll make it uh, more space in between our segments and then we can add more so let's uh, let's say that with eight uh, we're kind of got a pretty uh, nice bunch of them here and uh, let's see how should I explain that uh, let's keep this light no matter what we do let's keep it at eight segments so if we uh, go in the light name and we type down seg008 then uh, whatever the value we're gonna put there if we increase it it's gonna stay at 8 for for this so that's uh, one way to make sure that uh, we keep it like such for the moment let's color those so uh, let's double quickly double tap on a and uh, we're gonna look at the color value here and uh, we're gonna change those so uh, it's going up to frame 300 so like 300 divided by 8 what is that I'm so bad at math so 300 divided by 8 it's 35 37.5 so each uh, 37 and a half frame is gonna change uh, its color so we can like uh, make this one red and uh, let's make it a held keyframe and uh, for example let's make this one blue and we're gonna refresh that so uh, the, oh the first one is still white sorry for that let's make it red and let's refresh that oh I changed the second one because both of them were selected so let's just be careful of that and uh, now the first one is red and uh, all the rest are blue so that's kind of the the distance we need to uh, check. And uh, let's uh, get into something. Uh, why not? Let's get into cooler.com. And that is in Adobe. Oh, is it, isn't that? Uh, let's get into Google. So um, cooler. Yeah, Adobe cooler color.adobe.com all right so that's the new thing and um, 
basically it's just an application to uh, help you select analogous colors and uh, you can pick up uh, values from here and it's going to give us colors that goes well together and you can change that to a triad or monochromatic or it's just uh, an easy way to get nice uh, and uh, matching color patterns uh, because I'm not very uh, good at uh, selecting colors and now we have that uh, what should can we save that uh, must be a logged in uh, too much let's uh, let's just print screen it and uh, let's paste it in Photoshop I don't want to sign in there for the moment so let's create a control N control V and then we can pick up the colors from here so this green here uh, let's make this green let's make another uh, oops and oh there there they are the numbers so let's pick up that and uh, let's make a new keyframe and let's paste this yellow there I'm not being precise here on the, the amount of frames but uh, let's just do that and uh, let's get this orange here nice orange let's, let's paste this in and uh, let's get on to here let's get this pink make a new keyframe paste the color code and uh, this blue there let's get over here and paste it over there and let's refresh so that makes us a very cool little uh, color pattern here and both our first color uh, let's l let's leave all uh, those five only so some of them are going to be the same color but it's going to be gradual cuz uh, we've got uh, interpolation between those keyframes if we want like each of them to be the exact color we've put in we can toggle the hold keyframe and uh, there will be no interpolation but since uh, we have only five color and more uh, pieces it, both of them are going to be green and both of those are going to be yellow and uh, yeah if we can even reduce this pattern here if I get right in the middle there at 150 I'm going to hold alt and bring those in there and refresh so half of that is uh, colored and uh, the, the remaining stays blue and uh, we can simply add a loop to that so I'm gonna alt click here and uh, we can go in the property and loop out cycle and uh, it's gonna allow us to uh, uh, repeat our color pattern and I think that we would need an, another one here uh, to uh, register in the blue uh, so yeah let's go to 150 which is half of 300 and let's close that down again and uh, I think we should get approximately what we want now so we have uh, some some color pattern here for a moment and uh, let's mess around So our light is simply going from uh, left to right, and uh, so let's uh, let's copy that light. And uh, let's also create a camera. So con uh, Control Shift Alt C to create a new camera, and let's make it 50 millimeter in the default. Let's hit OK. Nothing should change. Let's make a new null. Control Alt Shift Y. Let's make it 3D, and we're gonna attach our camera to that. Make it pink. So that's gonna be our little dolly to attach our camera on. And uh, this we're gonna punch in the uh, angle here. So we're gonna get something. 
uh, like a 45 degree angle there. And then we're going to rotate with the camera also uh, uh, or maybe let's get back to zero let's rotate it 45 degrees there and then let's rotate from uh, top to bottom so I'm I'm using the camera and uh, with the rotation tool I'm hitting shift so I, I'm I'm not moving uh, I'm just going up or down so let's make it some kind of an angle li like that and uh, we can also uh, change uh, where it's uh, registered and uh, we can also uh, rotate them on Z if we want uh, this like angle to fit since it, it's a six-faced piece uh, we need to rotate it 30 degrees on Z or if you want to keep that at zero you can always uh, have the rotation happen here and just delete that for a moment and let's uh, rotate it 30 degrees on the Z so we keep uh, our general setting at zero and let, let's make this let's make another light so let's copy that and uh, let's remove our code here and uh, for the moment let's just grab both our keyframes here and let's uh, move that on the Z so it's gonna pull it back and uh, on th and this one let's make a couple of rows on the same light because we can so instead of like going from 1 to uh, 300 let's make this the same motion but between 1 and 100 and let's refresh so that's what we have now and what if we it alt and left arrow just to move this keyframe back one and uh, now we create a new one and uh, let's bring uh, this one back from the beginning here but uh, this time with the value like uh, twice the, the what we moved it on uh, Z so let's multiply that by 2 and let's get to frame 200 and uh, still being there let's go to positive 760 so if we refresh now what we're having is a uh, this row this light has two rows but it still has the distribution of eight pieces in it so it's gonna be more so let's let's have it even uh, let's get on this one move it one back create a new one multiply the Z uh, not multiply by two but this one uh, we're gonna add in we're gonna add in 263 so let's add in 263 and uh, get to frame 300 and uh, why is yeah and uh, just make this minus 660 so now we have kind of three rows on on this this one light so this light let's change their color so we can like uh, let's make this one only only pink and green So half of those should be pink and the other half should be green 
but now uh, we want more segments in there so now we can multiply that by three to make it 24 segments and we're gonna have something like that so we're uh, we're kind of uh, messing around with different things here but it's gonna allow us to get different kind of animation with the same offset later on um, so let's keep those at those segments at 24 for this and uh, basically we can like change all the negative values so minus seven everywhere it's minus uh, 760 so here and here oops so let's grab this one with this one with this one and the last one and if we stretch that now we can make it start from uh, from further in so let's move it back and uh, I think I forgot one there which is I think I need to leave this one out. So let's move all this. Oh no, and I, I gotta pick it up. So yeah, this one has oops, this one has got to go one frame prior. where we're at positive now we can ch change all these So minus fourteen thirty plus fourteen thirty. This one minus fourteen thirty. This one positive. This one negative. And this one positive and let's refresh so now we've got them uh, with a different spacing and that uh, we can pull back with the camera a little bit and increase the amount of segments oh, oh let's increase it here so let's uh, let's remove that for the moment and then we can change here until they are aligned un until the value are aligned correctly so this makes it like that and uh, then we can simply copy that patch here that light and uh, grab all the position here and now we can bring this upward on uh, the Y and uh, bring it someplace else
just to create uh, intricacies. So let's uh, let's bring this one back. Like let's put it there, and uh, let's just try to figure ways that we can uh, align them, and that looks like. Correct. So let's change the color for this one. Uh, maybe we can uh, grab uh, ones from here. So, uh, like, what's our segment number now? 43. So let's hard code that. 43. 43. All right. Now let's grab this yellow here and uh, we're gonna make this yellow and we're gonna add another and we're gonna add the yellow again and we'll see what we get with that kind of color pattern. So that makes it different for this one on the top here. And uh, there's no like good or bad way to do that. Uh, let's grab this one more time and uh, let's make sure that it stays at 43 or for the moment we can remove it because we're gonna change this one. So let's bring it down because I selected all my keyframes now and I'm gonna bring it down and let's make those smaller. So bringing, bringing them down makes it, uh, makes all them already look smaller, but let's make them all the pieces really smaller. So we need to go in the uh, paths from Tao lights and uh, we need to activate the size from radius property so now we can go uh, quickly twice tap on a here and uh, on our new tau light and then we'll be able to reduce the size here so once again uh, maybe we want more pieces here now that we change it so everything else is art coded we know that it's not going to change them so we can roll this uh, with different values here until we get what we want something like that not too close not too like until the almost touch I think is great and now we would want to change also the spacing here so instead of uh, we can have down those values here so let's get in the position and right here like it uh, it's start at 439 and why is there some interpolation here? Like, if you look at the Z, it's 539 and it's 539. And in between the two, this value moves and it shouldn't. So if we want to make sure that this stays the same, uh, we can select all of those and get in the keyframe interpolation and uh, set the spatial interpolation to uh, linear. And now uh, it'll stay at. 39 so let's refresh that and uh, maybe we should do that on all those since uh, we noticed it now so let's doesn't seem to be a problem let's just fix it anyways so we prevent so uh, what was it there uh, simply right click and uh, keyframe interpolation and linear and let's refresh to see if anything changes and uh, to my knowledge anyway so let's go right here and it's 539 539 and oh it's uh, 802 so let's get out our calculator here and I'm hitting Windows R to open up the run menu here I'm just typing down calc here it's some of the geekiest way I know to open the calculator and uh, let's uh, go ahead and type 802 minus 539 so that's uh, our space in between let's divide that by 
two. So uh, let's copy this value and uh, let's put 539 plus this value here. So we have our new number, it's 670. Let's replace the 802 values by this one. So that's automatically make, gonna make this one closer. And uh, also we have uh, like this value. If uh, we add uh, 670.5 and then we get 802 and this is the value that we're gonna put here and here. So that makes them closer. So we get a bunch of them. And let's hit U. And uh, we want more color changing in between them. How can we do that really easily since our colors here uh, are set to loop? Let's just bring those at an equal or somewhat equal distance. And let's like select them all, hold Alt, and bring them really close together. Remember, this loops, so as it will get to this last one, it won't show up here on the line. It would be cool if it, it would do so, but if you can look at this here, the color are still changing, so it's gonna repeat uh, between the, the process and uh, gonna get some nice, cool stuff here. All right, so that's good. Now, uh, I don't think I did this my example, but now that I'm thinking about it, what if we wanted to make uh, those, only those, taller. Well, we could simply duplicate another one and bring it underneath and th they would seem taller. For example, if I grab this and uh, making sure that all of these are selected, so it moves all at once. I can bring this back down here and it makes this cool thing here. But what, I, what, I, what if I really want to make them taller? How would I do that? Um, first of all, uh, we should have attach that to a uh, to a null but let's create a new null and let's make sure that our null it makes exactly what our light does all right so let's pick up this light now this is its position according to the fact that it's tied to this null here so let's untie it let's select none for the moment so you see here our values should change here so here are the real light values so if we copy that and we get over here and uh, let's hit control shift H so we can see actually where it is and let's paste that here so now what we've done is uh, we've brought uh, this motion to our uh, null here, and uh, now we're simply we're simply gonna while we're at the frame zero here, um, we're simply gonna remove the keyframes from this light, and we're gonna attach it to that. So now it should become zero zero zero. And uh, if we refresh, we should get the same thing there. Except that now, if we grab this intermediate null, so this will be our main null, and this is an intermediate one. So if we take this intermediate null, and now if I take all this, the main one, on which everything is attached to except this one, so I'm gonna attach that to that, and if I go in the scale and if I mess around with that like it's gonna scale them up but it's since uh, r relatively to where they are positioned it's also gonna change their uh, their actual position on the on the axis but now that we've uh, made this one correct it should be that one that's moving and our light is not really moving but it's attached to it so since it's attached to it and it's doing what we want our light to do we can get in this one intermediate here and uh, uncheck this and uh, if we were to uh, mess around with that now 
we can have them taller without affecting uh, their position. We could also uh, have them wider or anything like that, but th that's not typically what we would want. So let's just make them a little bit taller because we can. So that's one quick way that we can uh, alter the scale of our stuff without uh, changing it too much. And of course, all of those here, like if you look at it, our segment size is still at 100 and everything here is still at 100. So when we've done this, now if we want to change overall, we've still got one place to do it. So now on top of that, we can also generally uh, make them taller by doing it like that. So that's pretty cool. Now that we have this kind of a pattern now, um, how many segments do we have now? We have 63. Let's hard code that into there. 63. Not that we really need to, but let's. Oh, now that this one is attached to that, so we gotta make sure we remember that actually. And let's duplicate that, this bunch here. And uh, it's gonna increment here, so let's make sure that this stays to 30. Uh, to, uh, Sixty-three, and then we can grab all those keyframes from this uh, intermediate null and bring it in the back or bring it down if we want to have these stacks there of things that are aligned or not. So that's yeah, that's how I practically did that. And now they have the same color we want to scramble that we can simply like uh, mess around with those like let's uh, bring this one over here and let's bring this one over there and let's bring this one uh, I don't know let's mess around more let's, let's do this and let's add back the orange we had here so let's reveal that so we can see all of this and let's pick it up from there so we have nice orange here and we also have a nice blue and we can do like that and let's hit so we got like different patterns on our st stack here which is probably what we want or maybe not so uh, I'm not I sh there's no objective reason for that. So um, now you see that what happens if you don't select all your keyframes before moving it, it'll create a new keyframe and it's gonna bend the way. So let's grab all those and let's make sure we are actually, uh, our marker is uh, is on it. So let's uh, bring this one back there and let's also bring it over here. So this one is gonna be a little bit further in the distance. It's got too many colors it's uh, messing up the the whole thing is it nah no, what am I saying it's not messing up anything so this one let's keep it there in the distance and then let's copy back uh, the one we had prior to that so this group here and let's make this another color maybe so we're just sure that know where they are and uh, let's copy that and, oh we don't need to, them to be that tall, so let's make them like that, 80, just a little bit taller. And uh, let's bring this over here, bring it up there, make sure that it sticks to the same value here, and let's bring them, uh, making sure we select all. And uh, what is happening? Oh, <laughs> I've set the segments to six. That's what happening. What was happening? So let's bring it down. So that's kind of cool. We have this kind of a separation here, and uh, we can also bring it a little bit closer, or not. 
And then let's make another one of those. So it's got it's gotta be this tree stage random something. And let's bring them down like such. So there we've got something. And uh, not that it makes any sense or anything, but it's something. We can uh, send her back our camera or just keep it like such for the moment. And let's save that and let's make a quick background. I don't know what color should fit in there, but uh, probably one of those. Uh, we can put the one that's least present is blue here and let's bring this down there here. And we have this color, it's pretty colored. Let's repeat a little bit of that. So now that we've got the, or let's, let's, uh, yeah. Let's see what we can do uh, repetition wise. So let's open up the repeat path and let's open up the first repeater. And here we can repeat our whole stack of stuff here and we can have it uh, dub and doubled as it repeats. So one side and the other. Um, and by default, it's gonna be offset uh, by 100 pixels on the X. Maybe we want to offset it on the Y. So let's have some more further down there and let's bring it like further back and as you can see here it's kind of getting white there and it kind of disappears in the distance and that's because our default visibility settings needs to be changed so this white here is this white there it's what we're getting um, for our fog so basically uh, right here I would set the fog to be the same color as the background. And now uh, let's undo that so we can still see the white. Uh, the first value we want to pull here is the far. So we want to make sure that this numbers gets as high as our stuff goes far in the distance. So the default value was just not enough for us. We need more. So let's pull this, but not over. let's not overkill it. So if it's okay, at this value leave it at that or maybe just give yourself a little bit more just for uh, security measures but there is no need like to put it to 96 if that's the only uh, if that's as far as you are gonna get so uh, that's one thing and uh, now let's make our uh, fog distance further back as well and we can bring the fog start closer so it engulfs a little bit uh, of uh, what we have here and as it gets in the distance it'll fade nicely in the in the distance there I'm not really sure about those colors but hey we're just trying testing stuff so that's uh, one way that we can add a little bit of uh, perspective in this and let's activate the second repeater and if I would double it I would get one more here let's get the second repeater so all this we're gonna once again repeat that so by default it's repeating it on the Y let's repeat it on the X or on the Z and let's make all this like further in the front and back so that's gonna make a little bit more uh, complexity and um, perspective to our scene there so mm, no no real like scientific way of doing that there's many more things that you can do with that like we can uh, perhaps increase the random position a little bit so now we have something now we have a scene and in this scene, we can rotate the, the camera around and uh, we can get multiple diff different angles. Uh, let's bring a little bit more light details. So we're not going to use as we often do. Uh, we're going to uh, try to keep this one uh, not SIBL, so smart image based lighting. Let's try to just use uh, light objects. So we're going to create an ambient light, Control Shift Alt L. Let's call this one ambient, amb, 
and uh, let's select ambient and let's make the ambient color kind of the blue that our background is is in so it's gonna shade it like that uh, that's too much so let's keep this blue but let's get more in the white and let's adjust that so we simply get a kind of a glimpse of the environment that we're in just so it affects our color but so we can still see them and uh, now it's not the time to make uh, the final look because this is only our ambience light let's make another one so let's hit Control shift alt l and this one let's make it a point light and this one let's call it Tau Lumi so it's gonna get uh, picked up by uh, Tau differently and uh, the color for this one let's make it the opposite so uh, some kind of an orange and let's increase it just so we can uh, see it to s start with and uh, most importantly let's get back in Tau and let's activate the uh, in the material and lighting section, let's activate the include Tau Lumi lights, not the Tau light, but the Tau Lumi lights. And oh, that should brighten everything up. So, according to where our light is, let's see, let's bring this back to 100 and let's hide everything. Control Shift Alt H. So, this light now we can move this right in the center at 0, 540, 540. So, this is the center of our scene we can like select where choose where the light direction comes from and we can have some pieces like bright piece here and you can increase the radius here So I like these lights, they, they can create these uh, kind of uh, glowy uh, effects. And let's move it elsewhere. So let's duplicate it, Control D, and let's bring it back around here. bunch here so it looks pretty fine I'm just messing around here no uh, no true uh, scientific method like there's nothing that I'm doing that is uh, wrong or right good or bad it's beyond good or bad which which one of those philosophers said that Frederick Nietzsche Taoism it's beyond good and evil so once we've got some basic lights going on now we can get back in the Tao and we can um, save and uh, 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 uh. Let's change the color. Let's make it more orange. See what we get in terms of details from that. And uh, let's get in the light settings. So we're going to refine it here. So the ambient, what if we remove the ambient light? This is what it looks like. What if we re remove the diffusion? This is how it looks like. So maybe we don't want that much. Of diffusion oh then again maybe we can increase the diffusion softness which will still keep some of the highlights there but make it a little bit different and uh, without or with the specular depending on wh how you want those little pieces to shine and uh, of course if you want to increase the amount of shininess or if you decrease it to a very small amount like three it's gonna get all around and then we can reduce the specular and just have this hint of spec if we make all this metal it should not change much or the frenel 
once again it uh, it depends on what you put there so let's decrease that and uh, that's lo that looks fine can we increase the uh, the ambient try to find some nice values here something that doesn't look too bad and uh, what if we add a simple built-in uh, dark industrial over that uh, I don't think it's gonna look so good eh? let's shut down uh, the ambient while we do this and uh, let's also uh, it's not that bad but let's choose another one the church maybe would look better and this reflective more diffusion and let's bring in a little bit of our blue or the green forest or the graffiti ruin or the bus garage usually I like the bus garage But then again, diffuse only, off. But then again, you might want to just not use it. Or use one that is really, really not that strong. Just get a little bit of some of the diffusion details. And of course, it's all the tweaks now, so um, I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that uh, the uh, ambient occlusion is strong enough. So that might be what helps it a little bit. So we're gonna get more shadow details in this, in these, all these creases here and nooks and crannies. That's how we fill it in. And depending on what you're after now, you just have to be careful when using the uh, ambient occlusion. It might get a little bit noisy. So sometimes maybe in this case, we can get away with it being just to do on because our shapes are straight, but it doesn't seem like it. So usually what I do is I really overdo it and then I tone it down with the uh, lift here in order to get what I want and sometimes uh, setting it to super simple it makes it uh, look a little bit better so this is with and without but some other issues occur depending on uh, what kind of scene you're, you're doing so in this case let's bring it back to the default value just for moment and let's take a picture shift f8 and uh, let's go one by one so let's increase this we need more that's fine and do we need it to be smaller usually it doesn't get any good when we reduce the uh, radius so let's just increase it a little bit and the lift kind of tones it down a little and the scale we can simply try to keep it around 0.75 in this case or 0.65 to get something like that or even 6 and uh, on top of all that we can add a curve to uh, get a little bit of the punch back so control alt y to add an adjustment layer and uh, let's get in the levels first so we're gonna add a level effect and uh, let's make it 32 bits per channel just to be sure that we're accessing all the color ranges here so I'm holding alt and uh, clicking on this range here so as you can see we have 
these values here are changing. It doesn't go beyond 255 while I'm at 8 bits per channel, but if I hit hold Alt and click this, now we have more range here, and this is the max that we want. So we have this nice little graphic here, and usually um, I, a teacher explained that to me uh, a really long time ago, and he didn't explain to me why, but if you just bring this, like you see here, there's not any data here. So if we just bring this back in, it should give us a more uh, contrasty, uh, acceptable for the eye results. So let's bring this one in the middle, to the left or to the right, depending on what you want. And this is what we adjust the, the main contrast with. So every color has this, we could go individually on that. So let's get back here and this, let's make it back to default. So let's go one by one. Let's go m mess up with the red here. And sometimes doing that, you'll find uh, visually appealing uh, mixes of color. And sometimes it will make it uglier. But hey, you've got to experiment if you want to make something. So let's uh, now get back to the uh, RGB and it has filled in for us. So we can punch this down. And generally, this will kind of help to uh, bring more contrast and it will pop out the shadow a little bit more so we can tone them down now. So let's get back here and uh, one by one, we can go ahead and make some changes here and see how it reacts and see if we like it or not. So do we want more green, less green? It's all uh, really a question of taste. But uh, so this is our main uh, color correction pass there. And then we can get a curve effect on top of that. So let's get a curve. And we can punch in even more here with the uh, the contrast here. So make it make in a little S curve here. It's gonna do it something like that. So that's let's see that's before and that's after. I kind of like it better like that, and maybe we can even tone down our shadows a little bit now that we've punched it in. So let's make it uh, 53, and the radius, let's make it also 52. So let's grab a picture, and I think it was better. So let's keep it like that. So these are not super extraordinary nice colors. Let's get a little bit of movement in, in there so quite easily now that we've set this all up. Um, let's get in the offset and we're gonna do uh, something nice for once. We're gonna activate the offset color and uh, let's start at zero and let's go to frame 90. Uh, oh, I hope it doesn't crash on me. Please don't crash. And uh, that might be because of that. It set that to off. Hey, please don't do that. Okay, let's set that to off for a moment. Just so we can. Is it really the? It's really the uh, the AO that's uh, making it tilt like that. So let's uh, set that to off for a moment, and uh, let's simply uh, we were on frame ninety. Let's set our offset to one hundred, and let's set that to loop offset, so we get the same color. And let's make a quick. Uh, reference here and uh, we can move between those and if we 
let's set that to quarter for a moment and we're gonna test that so just by doing that it's gonna offset all our nice little colors and it's gonna be looping if we activate the loop setting so that's one thing that's pretty cool that we can do and uh, since we've had different settings in there it's gonna react differently on our chain of repeated objects there anyway you understand principle and uh, what else uh, let's make a wireframe on that nah now when you're adding wireframes um, let's get back to full and uh, I just want to get over this thing um, right in the segment section let's turn off the chamfer so the chamfer is what creates this little kind of uh, bevel on it. And uh, suppose I did want some some uh, wireframes on that, but I don't want it to occur on top. Let's set that to quads. Oh, they're still on top, but there's there are none on the on the side. So yeah, uh, one thing that I would like to be uh, possible in Tao, and I don't think that is right now is to turn off like I don't want to have the wireframes from the caps and the only caps related options are here the caps can I set that to something else it won't, it won't change anything maybe with it will it nah. so only if I did want them to have a different color here I can set that to solid color and then I can uh, make it like one and only color for, for all the top of those. So that's maybe something that you would be after. But in terms of removing those wireframes right on those caps now, it, it would be kind of cool if we had this, uh, this option here, just to mention that I didn't find a, a um, way to do it so uh, let's just remove let's just undo a couple of times until we get back to that and uh, perhaps we can just not remove the chamfer just make it a little bit thinner so we still get some details from it but uh, not as much and uh, so let's now that we've animated the color, that's something cool that we can do. And let's also activate, I thought I had closed steam. Uh, let, let's uh, activate something in the offset. Let's go in the offset animation sequence and let's activate that. And let's see the position Y if we do that. We're just testing now. We want to see what goes up and down. So in this case, the Z. Let's try that. So the OAS duration is over 10 seconds. It's the same for the um, geometry construction. So let's simply keyframe the AOS position Z here. And we're going to go right on the middle of our animation here. And we're going to keep it at 0. And we're going to make it another keyframe where it's at 0. And right in the middle, we're going to try to simply change a value here and uh, maybe not that much but 200 and let's see what is going to happen with that so let's test it out so that's going to kind of make them jump on the whole uh, on the offset of our path. So this might be something that you want to be able to do or not. But in this case, uh, it was just a matter of doing something that's moving and that's fun to look at with this kind of uh, a scene. And since it's set to uh, loop, it's all supposed to loop. So that's our thing looks great let's 
add the ambient occlusion back in and uh, can we can we actually test this thing is going to so that yeah that's something that is doable and uh, one other thing that I would like to mention that I would like the developer of uh, Tao to take note of is uh, I would really enjoy to have uh, one way of setting off this OAS or this offset on certain objects. For example, um, if I like, for some reason, I don't want one of these pack of things to move. I just want them to stay still. Well, as long as I'm activating uh, the uh, the uh, OAS, it's gonna affect everything and nothing could be left out of it. I know that there is this OFS zero code line that you could type in there that's supposed to cancel the uh, offset, but it doesn't seem to be working. Maybe it works with the other, like the, it's not gonna offset the color. Let's try that. Yeah, so it works to some extent. It works for the settings that are that are uh, here, there. So it will actually it will cancel on the specific elements that I've typed this down. OFS zero. It will cancel um, the offset color, tau lights, and any other thing that's affecting it there. But it won't cancel the OAS. So I would like to be like just able to do that. OAS zero and still keep the offset and have these two things uh, controllable separately so that would be one cool feature I think that it would be implementable and that it would serve a good purpose so that would mean we could leave certain elements out of uh, some motion that we set up but for the moment there's no uh, way that I know to turn the uh, effects generated by the OIS on specific objects without uh, turning it all off altogether. All right, so uh, I don't think I have pretty m much more to say about this. Uh, we can maybe tint this all down because bright colors. Sometimes they're cool, sometimes people don't like that the colors are too saturated. So just add some, just some, some uh, level of tinting, like some amount of tint on top of that. And maybe one more curve to bring it all up. Some people like when it's really like exploded like that. So maybe it, that's kind of all the look that we want. And we might have to change this individual blue here if it doesn't suit our taste. And let's quickly add the, uh, a vignette. So let's, I'm making an another, another adjustment layer, control alt Y. And on this one, I'm gonna add a curve and I'm gonna drop this down like that. So kind of make everything dark and uh, I'm gonna hit a four and check out what happens if I set that to that. And I'm gonna pick up the ellipse tool, just double click there. So it's gonna make a mask. I'm gonna invert that mask and I'm gonna hit twice on M to access the mask settings and then I can feather this thing out. So maybe that's something that gives it a little bit more focus, more punch. Or then again, maybe not. I do like it. I think it feels great. So that's, yeah, that's one thing that we're able to create with trap code Tao. Let's set that to 16. Mm, nice. We got a little bit more detail. And if you want to learn how to create nice depth of field out of that. Well, now you can watch again the old tutorial and now you know how to make this. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this and that it'll perhaps trigger 
some new ideas about how to use chat code DAO because it's a really powerful and fun tool to be uh, able to mess around with directly in After Effects and generate all kinds of trippy geometry and stuff and experiment before you do something in Cinema 4D, for example. And if you want to learn more, there's plenty more tutorials uh, specifically on Trapco Tao on my channel, Vimeo or YouTube. You can go there, subscribe and watch all that. And I'm going to make more because I love to do so. And I love feeding you guys with what I learn and uh, what I get out of my experimentations. So I uh, keep on uh, leaving stuff in the comments. If there's something you're not quite sure that I made, uh, you want to know how it went, how I made it, just hit me up. It's my pleasure. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you next time.